you also you don't report anything once you get more to contests you know which uh, vulnerabilities are gonna be uh, neglected and rejected and which vulnerabilities are more interesting there are other types of findings that are usually not gonna be um paid and i also wrote it in the chat so i basically use the audit tags like i teach you in the course and i i add audit comments and i add every time i see something i add audit comments if it's like to explain to myself the protocol border or a potential issue and there are a lot of very valid issues you know it's it's valid issues that we learn about the course but i didn't report them because i know that they're gonna ignore them and i don't want to spend time creating uh, reports for example you can see over here that this is an upgradable contract okay and here there is no storage gap so you know already if you went through the call attacks exercise that if this contract will be upgraded later on which probably might happen because it has a lot of bugs and you know they want to change the log logic then they might override storage variables and it's very dangerous so there are no store there is no storage gap over here and every every comment that you see not reported is basically something that i see and i decided not to report so this is one of them and if you have any questions please write them in the in the in the comment section in the chat so this is the initializer of the smart contract you can see that it receives the name of the token the symbol and it initializes all the all the basically all the constructors of not constructors the initialized functions of the inherited contracts which is access control upgradable erc20 upgradable so you can see here it basically calls the init and it set up a role of admin so the message sender the one who deploys the contract becomes the admin which can do a lot of things you will see in a moment what kind of things he can do and then he means a 10k ussd for himself to create this initial pool so it's decimal six like um, USDC. USDC is also with six decimal numbers. And there were a lot of vulnerabilities with also decimal number calculations that the owner has a lot of like power, too much power. Apart from the fact that it's upgradable, there are a lot of access control issues and problems that does not that it's not supposed to be in a contract. So here you have the modifier only control and there is a, it's basically a role role-based smart contract. So if you remember in Open Zeppelin, we have the ownable smart contracts and we have the access control smart contract that allows us to make multiple roles and assign multiple roles for more like advanced access control. So we have the default admin role, which is actually is not being used in the smart contract. It's only used initially from the test file to assign and grant other role, which is the stable control role. And this role has the modifier and it can do a lot of uh, shady things in the protocol. So the admin is being used. Admin is basically assigning roles. And this role is the one who has the access to all the functions. And here we have an event when every time a token is being minted, this is a collateral info. And this is basically another issue that I re didn't report. It basically, it's this is a map, uh, an array that holds all the tokens that are supported as collateral for the stable coins. Which means that if the protocol supports wrapped BTC or wrapped ETH, then it's um, then it's going to be over here in this array. So you have a struct. Collateral info, what is the struct? So here they define a struct and every struct is basically a collateral that is supported by the protocol that you can use in order to mint to deposit and mint those USSD token and it has its info inside a struct. You know, the token name, if you can mint with this token something, if you can redeem with this token, uh, back, basically if you can give ussd and redeem your token and get your token back the oracle for because for every asset we need to have an oracle what is the usd value for this asset path buy and path sell which had a lot of other issues that we'll see in a moment ratios and yeah this is the collaterals and basically this is the array that holds all the collaterals so here i wrote that this should be public you know because anyone any user can come and and ask from the smart contract on chain what is the collateral and here they chose to make it private but they create this function collateral list which basically returns it not very useful you can just make it public and that's it i don't see what is the advantage of creating this function 
All right, so this is the add collateral function, which allows the admin, right, only control, you see the modifier over here, to add supported tokens, tokens that will be supported by the protocol as collateral. Now here, this tract also receives if this token is redeemable or not. And actually, there is no functionality in the smart contract that allows you to redeem your original token, which means that if you deposit RAP BTC, let's say, and you minted USSD, USSD token, you cannot convert it back to wrapped BTC. So this is basically useless, right? Because if you cannot redeem it back, why do you need this Boolean redeem? So it's another just comment that I didn't report, but it's another thing that I noted and I saw. And the only way to get rid of this USSD token is basically sell it to the liquidity. They're going to add liquidity to Uniswap V3 together with DAI. And if you want to get rid and dump your USSD, you can sell it to DAI and then you can convert your DAI to whatever you want. And this is basically the admin that adds a new collateral. And another issue here is that there is no address zero checks. Basically, the parameters address Oracle and also path buy and path sell, which tells the protocol how you should buy the token, you know, using Uniswap or sell it. And there are no other zero checks, which is another issue. And that I didn't report because I know that usually these issues are, issues are being ignored. Here there is another very interesting thing. So this add collateral function can be used to edit existing collateral. So you can basically send an index of the collateral because right it's an array as you can see over here it's an array so you send an index and it's gonna basically write this collateral this tract to the index so it basically checks here that if the index is lower than the length of the array then it updates and overwrite the existing collateral which means that the admin basically can just use this function to remove all the collaterals and break the protocol or just remove collateral and it's Another rug way that the admin can do it, you know, we can just remove all the supported tokens and break the protocol. And so this is when he wants to edit existing collateral. And if he wants to add one, he can push to the array. 